How many of you guys are using smartphones in the audience? Can I see hands? Well, that's almost all of us. Can I have one small little small smartphone for a demonstration? Somebody brave enough, can, can you please come up fast? Yeah. Great. So, uh, before I take his phone, of course, I will just switch on some interesting thing, which is there. Let me do something on his phone. So he, of course, has one of the most advanced phones on his sleeves. Perfect. So you can take back your phone. So that's a normal smartphone, which I took in my hands for a couple of seconds. And uh, this, what you see on the screen, of course, is uh, something. Let's see what this is all about. Let me refresh this now that we have a new device. Let me refresh this. Well, it says device activated one. It says select a device to get started. Let me see what this says. It says IMEI, this is this in today's date. Yep. It says select what you would like to view. Let me go. Let me see what this is. It says call logs. Oops. I've got every single call log. Are these your call logs, sir? Yes. Absolutely. Wow. So every single call log of yours, including the duration and, of course, the dates, I'm getting that, almost 500 of them. Is that all? Absolutely not. Let me go to the next option. It says SMS. Whoa. Uh, let me see. Oh, my God. Let, let's, not go through the, let's not go through the SMSs. My bad, sorry. Let me go to contacts, of course. Okay. Are these your contacts? Cool. Uh, I'm not going to take the risk of going into browser history. Uh, you know, I can always go there into the GPS. Oh, lovely. I am getting the exact location of where you are right now. And guess what? I guess this is our location. Lovely. All this in 20 seconds flat of his phone in my hand. Please, please, guys, please. What you just saw actually enabled me to take an access to every single thing he has ever done on his digital life space. How is that even possible, Circuit? You just took an access to his phone where you showed me the messages, the call logs. But there's much more than, you, you know, than that what you do over the internet than just calls and SMSs. Right. So is your phone connected to gmail.com? Absolutely. So if I go to gmail.com right now and click on forgot my password, it will send me a verification code on the SMS or the text message of your phone, yes or no? Absolutely. Can I read his messages? Yes, I can. Can I reset his password? Yes, I can. Do I have a complete access to his inbox and his chats, which he has ever done using Gmail? Absolutely. Sir, do you have a Facebook account? Absolutely. If I click on Facebook, if I click on Facebook right now and click on forgot my password, it'll send me a verification link to my inbox, which is of course his inbox. Can I check his inbox? Of course I can. I have a lifetime access. And the moment I can do that, I can reset his password of Facebook and I have a complete access to everything he has ever done on the digital life space. And you know the best part? This application which I embedded into his phone does not even come up anywhere on his phone. No new services, no new applications, and he will never know that this is running on his phone. But I'll give you the more interesting thing. What I just showed you, this was the most, the most stupid thing a guy can ever do and call himself a hacker. Guess what, my friends? I did not even hack into his phone. I simply embedded a very small application which was made by my team into his phone and we took the same amount of permissions which a WhatsApp takes while you download WhatsApp. The only difference being I displayed the information on the screen and you don't get to see that information because it's there on some server waiting for somebody to, to see without your knowledge. So what you just saw was not even hacking. What is really hacking? And let's understand the topic of today, that is what is physically possible in the virtual space from the eyes of an ethical hacker. Firstly, let's understand what is the digital space all about. Today, we produce almost five exabytes of data. 
That's huge. How big is that? Every two days, we are producing that much data, which was made from the beginning of human civilization till 2003. That's massive. For us, the internet primarily only comprises of this website. We go and we search on this website. Whatever we get, we primarily think that this is what almost the total internet is all about. You'll be happy to know, my friends, that this website only indexes 0.004% of the total internet which is there. So when you search something here, you're only touching 0.004% of the total internet. So where the hell is the total internet? And how do you get to the total internet? There are some amazing ways. There was this very nice search engine which was there. It says, the search engine for devices. So Google searches website. This searches for actual devices which are already connected all over the internet. You can go ahead. I just went ahead and I, and I clicked on web camera. Just by clicking that, I get 11,000 unsecured web cameras which I get live to see on my screen. So what I will do you is, let's understand what I'll teach you now or what I'll show you now is what all is actually possible on the virtual space when you talk about hacking or viruses or malware. I'll show you a very small virus which I'll make, a malware which I will make in front of you. This is of course a generic notepad which all of us know about. I'm going to type how many? One, two, three, four, five. Five characters on the screen. I'm going to click Save As and I'm going to type ted.bat. Uh, I'm just going to save this file with some format. I click on save on my desktop and uh, do I have a file? Yes, I do. This is the file which I just made. Five letters and I saved it as a batch file. And see, this is my CPU performance right now. If I click on this file and I click here, you see, with five letters, my CPU performance goes up to 98%. The memory is almost up. And within the next 20 seconds, this entire system will be hanged. It just took me five letters to do that. This, of course, is a malware. And this can go ahead and, and, and destroy some very sensitive information which needs to be delivered on a real-time basis on a lot of servers. Of course, I can make much, or we, anybody can make a lot of more sophisticated malwares over the internet and spread that over the internet. Now, you can ask me a question. Hey, Saket, hold on. If you send us a malware, and if you social engineer us to actually go ahead and click on the malware, do we not have our antiviruses which will save us our genuine copy antivirus that we purchase from the stores which are going to protect our lives so that we don't get hacked by bad hackers? Absolutely, that is actually possible to secure yourself with malwares. And to give you a very small demonstration, I'm going to show you these three very interesting files, three malwares, I would say, which are created by me. Now, these three malwares are, of course, uh, you know, binded with some setup files of the most popular game across the globe, that is the Angry Birds. I'm sure all of us love playing the Angry Birds. It was in news very recently that the NSA is using the platform of Angry Birds to gather a lot of information from almost everybody sitting out here. So what this file looks like and what this can do, let's understand. I'm going to go to a very lovely website. It says virustotal.com, and this website allows me to upload any file and scan that file file with almost 48 or 49 antiviruses of the world. So whatever antivirus you're using, it will be there, and that file which I upload will be scanned then and there. I uploaded all the three files and see what I get. So the first one is, of course, angrybirds1.exe. The detection ratio is 47 out of 49. And let's go ahead and see all the antivirus companies. It's AVG, anti-malware, blah, blah, blah. And they are all detecting it. I'm sure you, 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 you're like, you, uh, feeling so secured and you're feeling that, yes, it's worth paying the money which you're paying for the antiviruses. But you still have two antiviruses which are, I'm sure, not very popular and nobody sitting out here is using, which are also not detecting it. But that's not the point. Let's go ahead and let's see. I made a second Angry Birds 2.exe, which is again a malware, but I encrypted the malware. Let's understand how does an antivirus work. It simply has a database of existing signatures of multiple malwares, and it, 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 uh, it scans or it 
checks whether the file which is being scanned has the same signature. If it has the same signature, it says, yes, this is a malware. If it does not say it doesn't match, then it says it's a clean file. So I simply went ahead, encrypted the source code of the malware, and look at this. The detection ratio went down to 18 out of 48. And as you can see on the screen, these are the antivirus companies which are detecting it. However, there are some very big antivirus companies which are not detecting it also. But of course, those people who are detecting it, whose antiviruses are detecting it, I'm sure you feel that it's very secured. Let me go to the third part. The good part of an encrypted file is you can always re-encrypt it or further encrypt it. And the detection ratio, I've actually gone ahead and, and, and done it to 0 out of 48. And no antivirus company in the world can detect this, and this is a malware. Is this a fault of the antivirus companies? No, it's not. It's basically a customized malware which I'm making whose, whose signatures they don't have. So if you click on that file, of course, you'll be affected, and I can take a complete access to your systems. Whoa, 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 that sounds scary. So what we are telling me is that you really don't need to download any files and use them on our systems, and then finally we can feel that we are secured. No, sir, you're still not secured. I can actually go ahead and infiltrate into your system and take complete access of your system only if you click on a link. So, okay, do you think that we are, we are from the dinosaur age where we don't know that if a random person sitting somewhere randomly in the world sends us a random email and asks us to click on a link which looks random, we will ever click on that? I'm sure none of us will. But the good part of, of the digital space is it is so easy to spoof emails. Anybody can do that. I just got a mail yesterday which says it's from Yahoo support and it says some security bots have detected some suspicious activity into your account and if it wasn't you, please click on the following link which will so to expire the session. If you get the same same email, will you click on that link? Yes, you will. And the moment you click on that link, because of course you did not try to access your account from Germany, you know, you can be hacked. But hey, wait, hold on, Saket. That link looks so authentic. You have yahoo.com, and this is a yahoo.com link. So if I click on this, it's not supposed to be a malware. That is the beauty of the digital space again. And uh, I'm going to show you something again on how you can simply mimic or you can simply fake what is being written. So I'm going to search for my favorite actress. Enter, it gives me Deepika Padukone, gives me 26.6 million results. Let me go back to Google again, and let me again type Oops, it says Deepika Padukone did not match any result. How is that even possible? That is possible because what I did this time was, I did something on an IDN homograph attack, where simply the P that you see is the Russian P. It's not the English P. It's a script. You know, the Russian script has a similar looking character, and I simply pasted when I was writing this. So I'm sure all of you know that you can always register domain names in multiple languages and not just in English. And thanks to that, of course, you can easily spoof a, 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 you know, a yahoo.com looking like URL, which is actually not yahoo.com. And the moment you click on that, somebody can absolutely get an access to your system. Whoa, that is scary. So you're saying, don't download files. Don't click on URLs. Don't go to emails. Whoa, that means what do we do? We disconnect our laptop from the internet, from the networks, and finally we can say that we are secured. No, sir, you're still not secured. How is that even possible? You're saying you can hack into a laptop without it being connected to any network? Yes, not just me, a lot of people can do that. Have you ever wondered how your laptop comes to know which place it is in and it automatically connects to the saved Wi-Fi networks when you open your laptop? My friends, without your information, your laptop sends out probe request packets every three minutes on an average to search for the saved Wi-Fi networks. And the moment that happens, somebody sitting right next to you can fake a Wi-Fi hotspot which is already saved on your system, and he can get connected to your laptop without you knowing that he's getting connected. And once he's connected, he can do a million things to actually you know, try to get an access to all of your system. So even if it's not connected to the internet, you are still vulnerable and you're still hackable. My God, that's almost scary. You're saying no files, no emails, no websites, and no, no, no laptop in short. So, so, so we are very scared about that. So what do we do? How do we secure ourselves? My friends, fatness is never a problem in a world where everybody is fat. What I'm trying to say out here is 
You'll be happy to know that Google.com has not deleted a single email from their servers till today. So every email which you delete from your laptop or from your inbox, it's only being deleted in your inbox. But it's still there for somebody from somewhere to find it when they need it. Again, what I'm trying to say is there's massive data which is already available on the internet and there's massive, massive, you know, uh, monitoring which is going on, which is beyond what we people can think in an average, uh, with the average di uh, digital, uh, you know, thinking, whatever we can get. And uh, being there on the internet, you should presume whatever you're putting on the internet, it's already in the public hands. And considering that, you should only put up things which are public. One last question, Sakit. One last, last question. You have told about so much about hacking. We've been hearing so much about hacking. And there have been so many people who have been giving so much reports on hacking. But we have really never faced hacking personally. You, there are big reports, but then the problem out there is that it just says that 4 billion accounts hacked or 3 million credit cards hacked, but we have not been personally subjected to the actual scenario of what hacking is all about. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be happy to know, or you might be interested to actually go ahead and take out your cell phones right now from your pockets and you check there is a small little message waiting for you out there, which is from your own number. And you just got a call from your own number, most of you. And if you did, you can just show your phone or something. And uh, that's how it is. And that's how this thing ends. All right. So it does touch most of you. And without your knowledge, a lot of things are possible. There are only two types of people in this world. One who know that they've been hacked. The other who do not. Thanks. Thanks.